What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is the Lazy Days channel and we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today and we're doing some kings and general content for you and we're on the Diadochi Wars Battle of Salames 306 we're really enjoying this story over on this channel really enjoying the content that kings and general produces um, he goes into a lot more detail over on this channel and it's just yeah it's, it's really really enjoyable if you haven't already please head over to his page a link will be in the description box down below if you're enjoying our content then please like comment subscribe hit that notification bell but we're just going to jump into this one antigonid dominance in the near east is in jeopardy following the debacle at gaza enemies to the west east and south surround Antigonus and his son Demetrius. Yet they still have enough supporters to okay. push back. The fate of Alexander's empire is still in the balance, and the winner of the wars of his successors remains undecided. It's just so much land With his army shattered that Alexander at Gaza, had. Demetrius moved north to Cilicia. Ptolemy now pressed his advantage reclaiming territory again as yeah far north the, the and little like just even though there's so many characters the way he's doing it it's so easy to keep up with all the characters i really enjoy the way uh kings in general produces his content territories as far north as tyre as for seleucus ptolemy gave his allies some troops to head east and reassert his authority in right, Babylon. okay how does this go News that Demetrius had returned to northern Syria with a small army reached Ptolemy when he was in Sili, Syria. Believing Demetrius was finished, Ptolemy ordered one of his generals, Kyles, to lead an army mm. north and crush the remnants of the Antigonids' forces. This proved careless, as Demetrius successfully ambushed Kyles' army near Strong. a town called Myus. And Demetrius is obviously the son son or stepson of Antigonus um, so he's actually proven himself in this battle didn't do well in the last one troops and much wealth in the process buoyed with this victory Demetrius returned to his base and requested reinforcements from his father Antigonus mm, they go father so yeah direct son in the meantime Antigonus had defeated Asander's remaining forces mm, in Caria strong. and had taken control of Asia's Aegean coastline. On receiving Demetrius's letter, he once again headed east. In late 312 BC, he arrived in Syria and, joining with Demetrius, quickly recaptured all the lands that had been lost. <laughs> quickly! Just quickly! <laughs> <laughs> it just reminds me a bit of um bit of uh alexander i think these are the same sort of places that just just gave up to alexander right <laughs> Tigonus followed in pursuit arriving at the border of ptolemy's domain with over eighty thousand mm. men yet his gaze would be quickly diverted to the southeast where the nabataeans were hostile to him Antigonus decided to launch a campaign against these people to secure his flanks. Mm. His son besieged Petra, but the campaign proved costly, time-consuming, and indecisive. In the end, an agreement was reached, with no real gains on either side. Ah, oh, so pointless. That sounds so pointless. In the fall of 311 BC, Antigonus received news that Seleucus had defeated the Antigonid army in Iran and recaptured mm. Babylon. Upon hearing this, Antigonus shelved any plans to invade Egypt. The threat of losing his eastern provinces to Seleucus was too great. Desiring to march on Babylon, Antigonus proposed peace talks with his fellow successors, most notably okay. Cassander and Lysimachus. Ptolemy was later also included, and in the end, a treaty was reached and peace mm. agreed. So what who got what? 
The ramifications of this peace would be far-reaching, most notably in Macedonia. Its governor, Cassander, was not eager to share his mm. power. He ordered the execution of Alexander the Great's son and his mother, Roxanne. The Argia dynasty... Wait, what? ...to share his power. He ordered the execution of Alexander the Great's son and his mother, Roxanne. Wow. Wow. I'm shocked. I, 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 I haven't got words. He just killed the son of Alexander and his mother. Just killing the, the lion. Oh, I hope he gets a painful death. Oh, I hope he gets a painful, horrible death. The Argia dynasty of Alexander and Philip had been wiped out. The consequences would soon be clear for all to see. I'm sorry guys, I'm a bit speechless. Back in Syria, Antigonus was now free to focus on Seleucus. He dispatched Demetrius with 19,000 men to tackle this problem. In the beginning of 310 BC, Demetrius and his army reached Babylon. Seleucus had already left the city with most of his forces and the city was captured without a fight. Mm. Yet one of the citadels remained in Seleucus's control and defiantly resisted. Not being able to afford yeah. a lengthy siege, Demetrius left 6,000 of his troops under the command of his general, Archelaus, to continue the siege while he returned west to his impatient father. Yet Seleucus proved a dogged opponent. Um, and okay. later that year, Antigonus was forced to lead an army east to fight Yeah, why didn't he just leave his son there? Our knowledge of this war Antigonus is just being really arrogant and just making lots of mistakes. To me, at this point in time, I may very well be wrong, and you guys will most likely let me know in the comment box down below. But, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like if he didn't just go reinforce Demetrius at the start, maybe, maybe he just wouldn't have to deal with this now dubbed the Babylonian War, is almost non-existent. Yet what we do know is that following Antigonus's sacking of Babylon, Seleucus defeated mm, Antigonus in really? a major battle in 308 BC, and a peace was agreed. Wow. In this act, Sorry, guys. Antigonus and a peace was agreed. In this act, Antigonus's hold on the east mm. was severed and the aging general returned to the west. Seems like it's a, he's going on a bit of a down... Meanwhile, a new threat he has, has been growing for He has got a large portion of this land, though. Tignus, his old adversary, Ptolemy, had been secretly intriguing against mm. him, gaining territory and influence in the Aegean. Determined to reassert his power, Antigonus ordered his son, Demetrius, to cross over from Ephesus and take Greece okay. from Cassander. The short-lived peace was at an end. Demetrius landed at Athens in 307 BC and quickly gained control of the region. Okay. Further successes followed at both Megara and Munichia. Cool. Yet Antigonus was eager to weaken Ptolemy by taking his most prized possession, the island of Cyprus. Mm. And so he ordered Demetrius to leave Greece with his army and return east. In early 306 BC, Demetrius departed Athens with most of his army and headed towards Cyprus. On his way, he stopped at Rhodes, hoping to add the formidable Rhodian navy to his forces. Yet the Rhodians, claiming neutrality, refused. Oh, that's a shame. Demetrius continued east and soon reached Cilicia, where more troops awaited him, sent from his father. Reinforced, Antigonus's son crossed over to Cyprus, landing on the Carpass Peninsula with 15,000 infantry and 400 cavalry in the spring of 306 BC. 
He also had 110 triremes, 53 heavy warships, mm. and many troop transports. Demetrius quickly solidified his position on the island, capturing the towns of Carpazia and Urania. I see. He then turned to his main goal, the city of Salamis. As Demetrius approached Salamis, the Ptolemaic forces stationed there, some 12,000 infantry and 800 cavalry under the command of Ptolemy's brother, Menelaus, were awaiting his arrival on a nearby plain. Battle ensued, okay. and Demetrius won the victory, oh, really? that easy? killing a thousand and capturing three thousand of Menelaus' forces. Is it really that easy in that? Oh, With his remaining forces, Menelaus retreated to Salamis. Demetrius now began to besiege the city on both land and sea. He had had previous expertise of sieges before then, mm. most notably at Munichia, and he therefore had many siege weapons in his army. Mechanical engines such as catapults, designed especially to help assault a settlement. Okay. To aid him further, Demetrius also ordered the construction of some formidable siege engines, including two battering rams and a siege tower. Yet this was no ordinary siege Ooh. tower. Nine stories high, it was the largest the world had yet seen. Wow. It was called the Helepolis, the taker of cities. Nine stories. Over a wow. month was needed to construct the engines, but finally they were ready. Demetrius ordered the assault, and both the rams and Helepolis succeeded in clearing the walls of Menelaus' oh, defenders. Wow, that easy. It was that easy. Wow. Wow. This is so interesting as well. That that nine story siege tower that must have that must have been so difficult to build and like surely you would try and send scouts out to stop it, but then you won't be able to because then you get assaulted, I guess. You know? Oh, it's it's crazy. I'm just trying to picture how like this would look in real life and uh, like imagine having to be in it, that would be horrible. It'd be so scary. It'd be so scary. Soon the city appeared to be on the brink of nothing. defeat. This is crazy. Yet that night, Menelaus sallied out from Salamis okay. and burnt down Demetrius's siege engines. With them destroyed, the city gained the respite it desperately needed. Demetrius was unable to capture the city, and the siege continued. Hmm. Before Demetrius had been able to finish his blockade, Menelaus had sent word to his brother of the situation. Gathering a large army and navy, Ptolemy sailed over to Cyprus, arriving at Paphos with a fleet of 140 warships oh, wow. and 200 troop transports, carrying 10,000 infantry. He then proceeded along the south coast of the island, where he was further bolstered by his Ptolemaic allies on Cyprus. Very okay. quickly, he reached Kition. There, Ptolemy managed to get word to Menelaus. He knew that if they could combine their naval forces together, their force would have a great numerical advantage mm. over their foe. He ordered Menelaus to sneak the 60 ships he had in Salamis out of the harbour under the cover of night and join him. Yet Demetrius got word of Ptolemy's plans. Oh, that night, nice. he placed both his siege equipment and best men aboard his ships, and sailing around to the harbour of Salamis, made sure that any attempt by Menelaus to sneak past his lines proved impossible. As Menelaus' forces failed to arrive, Ptolemy realised his plans had been foiled. Hmm. Nevertheless, he sailed round Cape Pedalium with his armada and prepared for battle. Oh wow, he's going to go for Ptolemy's it. On Ptolemy's arrival, Demetrius quickly reorganized. He left ten ships to blockade the narrow exit of Salamis's harbor, preventing Menelaus's sally. The rest of his navy he placed facing Ptolemy. Hmm. On his left, Demetrius deployed his greatest ships in a double line. Hoping okay. to quickly crush Ptolemy's... I'm just going to say, it's really interesting to see this naval battle and the way it's going here as well. 
I like the animations he's doing, really like the content kings in general make. He crushed Ptolemy's right. Demetrius stationed himself in the front ranks of this wing, although he himself was not to be in command. Okay. Realizing his inexperience at naval warfare, he had deferred command to his most experienced admiral. Me I respect that a lot, guys. To to be a good commander in general is to go, or a good leader. There you go, not commander, a good leader is to go, sometimes I need to delegate this role to someone else because I'm not efficient in it. I'm efficient in many other things, but this I need to learn on, and right now I need your experience. So just having the humility to do that just shows me what type of person that he was. Do you know what I mean, it gives you a sort of insight. He's willing to put his pride to the side, um, which get a lot of people a lot further in life if they, they're willing to do that, I think. Medius of Larissa. Demetrius deployed the rest of his ships in a single line. Adopting a similar strategy, Ptolemy strengthened his own left wing, hoping to quickly break through his opponent's right. Okay. The battle commenced with an advance by Demetrius against Ptolemy's right. Very quickly, Demetrius's most powerful warships aided by siege engines they had attached to them, mm. destroyed the opposing forces. Medius now ordered the ship's right in order to start folding up Ptolemy's line, with Demetrius himself being in the thickest of the action. Oh, God. Meanwhile, Ptolemy had successfully overcome Demetrius's right flank. Yet his attack proved too slow, and as he began to envelop Demetrius's center, he saw with dismay that the rest of his fleet was already routed. Hmm. Believing the battle lost, Ptolemy retreated. Meanwhile, Menelaus had successfully managed to break through the blockade. Yet it would prove too late. By the time Menelaus had entered the fray, Ptolemy was already in flight. Oh, the engagement wow. had been a disaster for Ptolemy. Over 40 warships and a hundred supply ships were captured, along with their crews. As for Demetrius, only 20 of his ships had been damaged, although scholars now- Only 20! Only 20! That's insane! That's crazy! That's so good! Though scholars now debate whether Demetrius lost more on his right wing. The implications of this victory were far-reaching. Salamis duly surrendered to Demetrius, and Menelaus retreated to Alexandria. As Salamis okay. fell, all other Ptolemaic holdings in Cyprus followed suit. In oh, total, wow. Demetrius captured 16,000 infantry and 600 cavalry, many of whom then joined the Antigonid army. Wow. For Ptolemy, the battle had Such... been a disaster. So so he, f he, I think he did. So he proved himself since that fight we last saw him. Demetrius, for sure. Disaster. Losing control of Cyprus, his most cherished possession. Yet for the Antigonids, Demetrius's victory meant that their power was now unmatched on both land and sea. Mm. They were the superpower. But more challenges would soon follow. Well, I guess we'll find out in the next episode. I'm really enjoying this. If you guys are enjoying our content, then please like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let us know what you want us to react to in future. And we will catch you in the next video.